Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I'm glad, I'm glad you could join me again today. I want to talk about uh, having hope for people when you're hurting. Have you ever really had a bad day? I am confident that everybody that's watching me right now can say, yes, I've had a bad day. Maybe it was a long time ago. Maybe it was recently. It might even be today. I don't know. But I'm glad that you joined me today. Uh, I don't think you're alone. <laughs> everybody has had uh, tough times in which we just feel sometimes overwhelmed. Um, and I, one of the questions is, well, wh what is suffering? Why is it? Well, some of you could say, I could write a book about that. I don't need you to tell me what suffering is. But the word suffer in the Bible occurs 40 times. You know, one of the things I like about the Bible is it's honest. It doesn't beat around the bush. It doesn't avoid topics. It really is uh, relevant to the issues that you and I will face every day in our life. And it occurs, as I said, 40 times in the Bible. Twelve of them are in the book of First Peter <laughs> alone. And so the word suffer is a translation of the word, a Greek word, which means to experience a sensation or an impression that is usually painful. Um, I had some suffering this week. You might get a kick out of it. I went in to have a root canal done. And uh, so I'm in the chair, and of course they give you the the uh, anesthetic to numb the, the nerve to your teeth. And uh, the first injections didn't take, so the, nerve, the uh, doctor came back in and gave me a second injection of something which was supposedly stronger than the first one. That didn't work. So then she decided to make an injection right into the root of the tooth that was already in pain, which was still not numb. And I have to tell you, I can define what suffering is. It's what I felt like doing after she stuck me in the nerve with the needle, but I didn't. I just chuckled. She says, why are you chuckling? I says, I can't tell you. <laughs> anyway, I, I experienced a little bit of suffering that day, and, I'm, and I have to go back because she didn't get the root canal done, so i got to get her done again. <laughs> anyway, suffering is close to a an experience or feeling that we all have. It's like when you lose someone, we say we lose someone, or we lose a job, or we lose our health, or we become injured, or someone harms us, or damages us, or breaks into our home and violates our uh, sense of well-being or security, and we feel very insecure in our life. And it's kind of interesting. You know a guy named Sir Isaac Newton? Uh, he wrote about trials and suffering in addition to writing about gravity. And he said this, he said, Trials are medicines which our gracious and wise physician, he was talking about God, prescribes because we need them. I didn't feel like I needed that, what happened to me. And, and he proportions the frequency and weight of them to what the case requires. Let us trust his skill and thank him for his prescription. Well. I'm going to have to work a while on being thankful for what happened during the root canal. But God is not one who hates us. He's not one that really enjoys seeing us suffer. So why in the world does God allow suffering to even happen? And that's a question a lot of people ask me as a pastor. Why does God allow suffering? Because if we say there is a God, and if we say that God loves us and He does, and, and all, why in the world would God who loves us allow us to go through suffering? Well, I can tell you there's a lot of reasons for that. One reason that God allows us to go through some suffering is because it reveals what's in us um, when we go through suffering. The uh, doctor was pretty much humored when I started to chuckle when after she just got through giving me an excruciating pain. And she said, why did you chuckle? And I said, well, I've been through a lot of things in my life, a lot of things that are worse than even getting a needle stuck in your, in your, in your root canal. And I said, it has enabled me to have a perspective on suffering. I said, I, I, it really hurt, <laughs> be honest. But I said, it, in perspective with what I've seen other people go through, I decided that I was 
not in such a bad shape. I was very fortunate. Suffering allows me, on in one part, to have a different perspective on life and to be empathetic to people who are going through suffering. Also, to not overly react when I go through a, some kind of temporary suffering, when I realize I've got friends that are going through terminal cancer. I got people who've lost their loved one. I got people who've uh, lost their job. They don't know what they're going to do to pay their bills. I'm thinking my problem was just a temporary one. And so suffering gives me a perspective on life that I wouldn't have had if my life was always easy, pain-free. I always got everything I wanted uh, and so forth. And I decided that, you know, suffering has some benefits. One, changing my perspective. Another one is this thing of giving empathy toward others. If I had never suffered, I would not know how to minister to someone else who's going through suffering. My words would sound empty to a person who's really struggling in life. When, I, when I'm able to share out of a personal experience of my own loss, it really helps me to have some credibility with someone to say, I do not know how you feel, which is true. But I know how I felt when I went through a similar experience. And it gives me a connection to people. I think God has allowed suffering in my life for the purpose of enabling me to be a better minister. To know how to minister to people and care about people. And don't just judge people. And don't just uh, take other people's suffering for granted. To some people, the suffering they go through might be the hardest thing they've ever endured in their life. And we who are... Uh, not going through that with them at the moment, need to be there for them to show some love and some empathy, some care, and even if we don't completely understand what they're feeling, at least to show them that we're there for them. By the way, I'll give you a tip. When you know somebody that's going through a hard time, don't go over there and criticize them. Don't tell them what they should have done. Don't even try to tell them what they should do unless they ask you. Just be there and say, I care about you, okay? God bless you, you have a great day.